folks. I'm Mike Brightman. Thank you so much for having me in. And thanks for coming to my lecture, uh, Beat All Nighters with SketchUp and Lumion. So first things first, rendering is tough. It's difficult, it's complex, it's time consuming. Uh, it's tedious. There's all these things about rendering that are super difficult from texturing, modeling, uh, lighting, just the time it takes to actually get the renders to come out. And then forget even doing animation. That's like a, a separate thing that just takes forever. So these are all the, the battles that I had with, with rendering up until I found Lumion. So Lumion is truly different. Lumion is fast, easy, and beautiful. So are you guys familiar with Lumion? Yes, right on. You know that there is a student version available, and it's actually super powerful. It, it, it's, uh, in the past two years, they've really uh, dialed that up and given access to like a ton of features, and it's just a very subtle watermark, and it's very usable for your project. So definitely check that out. But Lumion is different. It's, it's uh, real-time rendering, uh, real-time uh, feedback with non-real-time results. So basically, you can set up your scene. Uh, you can assign Lumion textures, you can add Lumion objects, you can import your model from any of these different pro uh, modeling programs like SketchUp, Rhino, Revit, ARCHICAD. Anything will come into Lumion, it gets uh, brought to life with our materials and objects, and then you render it out using our uh, styles and effects. So that's kind of the, the, the base idea. So let's take a look. Um, beautiful renders within reach, that's Lumion. Let's take a look. Uh, my company is Brightman Designs, and we offer design drafting and visualization, uh, design drafting, visualization, and workflow training services. So that's my, my day job. And then we also design better 3D workflows for architects. That's a big part of what we do is everything that I learn in my day-to-day -day practice, I'm always polishing and I'm writing it in the book. And then once I write the book, then I start automating it using uh, Ruby scripts and SketchUp. And so we're sharing all of that with you. Uh, and another, uh, another new product that we have is called Crowdsource 2D. And I'm going to give you kind of a, a quick glimpse of that and show you where to get a starter pack of our cutout people. So I don't know if you've tried to uh, populate your scenes with, with realistic people, but uh, that's a difficult thing. So what we did is turned our office into a photo studio, and we've been bringing people in the office and created some really nice cutout 2D characters. And I got a starter pack for you guys, too, so that'll, that'll help as well. So just a, uh, some examples of what we do uh, with our visualization work is, uh, this is actually a campus rendering we did recently, uh, all using SketchUp and Lumion. That is the, the base of our workflow. We, we don't mess around with Photoshop. We have it, but we don't post-process. Everything that we do, when I hit render, I always render the, the entire batch to a folder on the work drive or Dropbox. I share that link with the client and then I go home. And I don't wanna wait around for those renders to finish and then have to post-process in Photoshop. That's the way I like to do it. So you're seeing a, a, a handful of uh, our recent projects that we've done, and they range from what we call like a concept rendering, which is not quite as polished. Uh, usually concept renderings need to be out the door uh, by, by Friday, and uh, they, they don't get as much detail. And then we also have some marketing images as well, and those are more like a polished, you know, we might spend a couple, a week or two on it. But truth is, we never go into Photoshop. We avoid that uh, just because it adds another layer of work, uh, uh, just more time, more effort. And I don't think that we really get much out of it when it comes down to it. So that's some of our work. And then uh, if we take a look at some of the, the real pros in Lumion, we, we poach these images from Lumion's website and just put a reel together to show you just how nice these images can be. And with the addition of like real skies and skylight and hyperlight, uh, soft shadows, fine detail shadows, uh, and Lumion 10 just came out on Monday and that has uh, fine detail nature, uh, real skies at night, aurora borealis, there's all kinds of really slick new features and uh, you can make this happen, I'm gonna show you. So uh, that's the idea. Beautiful renders within reach with Lumion and my modeling program of choice is SketchUp, through and through. I think SketchUp is by far the, the fastest, uh, simplest, most straightforward, expandable modeling program. I've used a lot of them, but I latched onto SketchUp early and I just got really good at it. And so I can do everything that I need to do inside of SketchUp. So that's, that's uh, why I wrote the book, The SketchUp Workflow for Architecture. I spent uh, 
probably seven or eight years doing nothing but knocking out 3D models for, uh, for architects and home builders. And I was doing that on fixed fees. And when you work on a fixed fee, you usually you s start counting your hours because you want to know that if you're only getting $1,000 for this, you want to get it done in like 10 hours or even better, five hours. You know, now your hourly rate starts ballooning. So the idea is that uh, when you're working on fixed fees, you, you get the hustle and then you find those shortcuts that make sure that you're making that, that proper hourly rate. So that's what I find with SketchUp and Lumion together. As far as our visualization work, there's just no more powerful combo than those two. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you a, a demonstration today. I'm just gonna hop over into SketchUp and we're going to live model uh, a, a project that was kind of inspired by your 804 studio. I just kind of combed through the projects and uh, I'm just gonna model something up and then let's see if we can make a render happen. And you know, the idea being that like, we don't want any more all nighters, right? So, or, or maybe if you do uh, find that you're, you're much faster, you can spend more time on design or more time, more free time. But uh, I'm gonna show you how, to, how you can move really fast and it's SketchUp and Lumion. All right, so first things first, I'm just gonna draw a uh, building footprint on here and I'm gonna call it 100 feet by 50 feet, enter, like that. All right, and then I'm gonna use my push pull tool and pull this up by say 25 feet. All right, so we're in good shape there. And then, uh, so this is just kind of like a masked out block and whenever I work in SketchUp, I'm always very precise. A common misconception of SketchUp is that it's not accurate. And that's absolutely not the truth, is that you can type in the precise dimensions and it's accurate down to a 64th of an inch or a thousandth of an inch. So there's no difference between the accuracy of SketchUp versus the accuracy of Revit. All right, so then uh, I'm just gonna start kind of pushing and pulling this thing around. I'm gonna uh, copy this over here by say 15 feet. Uh, we're gonna make a copy of our bottom edge uh, just take that, move it up by say eight feet. And uh, then I'll take uh, this edge over here. And this is kind of how I work. I just do some construction geometry. I'll say like 20 feet. And um, let's see, then uh, the whole roof line, I'm gonna bring that down and pull it out. I'm gonna make this like roughly uh, three foot drop here. So like that, so we'll say three feet and then um, I'm gonna kind of clean this up a bit. And let's see, so we need, this part is gonna kind of go all the way back. Uh, this is gonna go back by like 12. And um, let's see, uh, this one, I think um, this is like this uh, center that was on your website there. I'm gonna pull this one all the way down like that. Okay, so that's, that's close enough. And maybe we'll reference a picture and, uh, and then I'll uh, c continue to clean it up. But what's beautiful about this workflow is that you can just kind of carve things out and get it started, get it into Lumion, and you can always go back and forth. It's not a linear process where you just build a model and render it and then you have to go back to the drawing board. This is like a seamless process where I can always iterate and I can continue to change as I go. All right, so let's see. Um, we're, we're good to go there. Then um, I, I think I want this, uh, this part needs to push back a little bit further to, let's see, I'll go back 10 feet. And then uh, we're gonna make this into a group. So it's always a good idea to group early and group often, all right? So, and then also when I say that, it's a good idea to save early and save often. I can't stress that enough that it's so easy to get going in, in, in SketchUp or in any program and you start knocking out all of this work, and if you don't save it somewhere, then the autosave is kind of hopeless. You know, it doesn't have a path to go save to. So I'm just gonna save this to my desktop temp, and I'm just gonna call this uh, 804. All right, so now we need a little more detail. We need like a, um, uh, a ramp to get up, up to this. So we're gonna use uh, our, our rectangle tool, and I'll draw a, um, eight by eight square, uh, let's do eight comma eight, enter. And then I'm gonna pull this out by say six feet. And then I'm gonna extrude it this way and I'll snap to that point. Now this next move, I'm gonna do a push pull, but I'm gonna tap control. All right, so now I've, I've left a copy of that starting face behind and maybe I'll pull it out this way by say 
20 feet and just see where that gets us. And then I'm gonna move this down. I'll move that straight down by say uh, four feet. And then I'm going to push pull out by say uh, 10 feet. And then I'll do another one of those tap control and pull this all the way to the end like that. And then I'll just kind of move this straight down on the blue. And actually I wanna snap this point to the bottom. All right, so that's a little out of whack. You can see you can always make changes with SketchUp. You know, I can scoot this along the red axis and kind of get that to look the way I want it to look. I could also snap my midpoint to my midpoint up here. You know, that's a possibility. There's all these ways to kind of use SketchUp to, to get the look you want and make meaningful relationships between edges and surfaces. Notice that I haven't been asked one time, what's your wall type, what kind of insulation, you know, what is this material? I'm just moving with the form. So that's what I think is so powerful about SketchUp is that I can just get in there and get going. And I don't need a bunch of templates and uh, wall types and uh, sheets and all these things that a lot of other programs require just to get going. So I think we're in good shape there. Uh, we've got our ramp. Again, I would just triple click that, make it into a group. All right, and then um, I'm gonna start building out a little bit of the site. Now this part, uh, this could get a little tricky, but we'll go like, like this, and we're gonna do like kind of a gravel, uh, gravel under there, and then let's see, I'm just gonna build out like another big rectangle, and uh, maybe another one going this way and just kind of work this around. And I'm gonna reverse those faces. It's not critical to reverse the face. I don't know if you've ever noticed that there's like uh, those kind of purple and, and white uh, surfaces in SketchUp by default. It's just the default material, it doesn't matter. Uh, but I like to keep the fronts always facing out. It's just best practice. Okay, so then um, I'm gonna leave the site for uh, a little bit later. And we're just gonna kind of get to uh, texturing and rendering first and then I'll show you how you can make some changes on the site rather easily. Uh, and then so, you know, with the site, I would probably, I'm gonna make this into a group. Uh, this guy and this guy are gonna be a group. And let me see what I've got here. Um, I'm gonna take all this stuff and I'm gonna cut it for just a moment. So it's on my clipboard. And then I'm gonna move these, these pieces out. I just wanna make a much bigger site. I'm, I'm kinda changing my mind on the fly like that and like that. All right, so there's all kinds of plugins for SketchUp, and I've got my favorites. Of course, Condoc is what I use for construction documents and also managing layers and styles and scenes. But uh, Placemaker, uh, Artisan Tools, um, Valley uh, Instant Architecture, those are like three super powerful plugins. Um, so Artisan Tools, what I can do here is I can select my site and these are my artisan tools right here. These are meant for like sculpting and organic modeling. This is another misconception of SketchUp is that you can't do these like organic forms. It's just simply not true. It doesn't really do it well with the, the default tools out of the box, but it's also possible with the default tools. But when you buy something like artisan tools, it makes it super easy to sculpt your site. So I have one big surface and I can subdivide that surface and I'll just subdivide it a couple times and um, you know, maybe one more, and uh, there we go. So now I've got this subdivided surface. I can go in there now with my sculpt brush, and I'll, I'll unhide the rest of my model. Just another uh, tip, under View, Component Edit, Hide Rest of Model, I use this command more than any other command in SketchUp. What it does is the group that I'm in, it isolates it. It hides everything outside of that group. So I have a keyboard shortcut, Control H, and that really helps me just to kind of move fast and get things out of my way. So view, component, edit, hide rest of model. Uh, I'm gonna use my sculpting brush now. Uh, if I hold like the left arrow key and move my cursor, I can adjust the brush. And then if I hold up and move my uh, cursor up and down, I can adjust the pressure. So now I can just kind of like go around here and just sculpt a, a site. So I can kind of you know make this go up or I can also hold the arrow key and then make this side of it go down like that. We'll just kind of flatten this out. And if you notice down here at the bottom left, there's some other prompts. So, so I'm on the sculpt brush. You can go to like a smooth, pinch, inflate, and flatten. 
So there's all these different brushes that you can use to just kind of mound things up and push them around. And if you watch these uh, tutorials on the Artisan tools, I always learn something new. I, I mean, I just like figure out the things that I need right now and then I move on usually. But if you watch those tutorials, they're, they're absolutely amazing what you can do with these tools. So we're in good shape. We've got our, uh, our building on here. We've got a site set up. And the reason I kind of mound things up is because I never want to see the horizon. That's like a bad thing is to you know, see a horizon in your rendering. So we're going to do a little bit of mounding, and then we're going to dump a bunch of trees behind there too to make sure that that doesn't happen. All right, so uh, to get over into Lumion as fast as we can, we should probably just throw in um, you know, a little more, uh, just a little more geometry and then get on to our um, texturing. So what I'm going to do here is, uh, let's see, we got our, our site, and then I'm going to just draw like a, oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to go back in here and I'm gonna do a paste in place. I use this command all the time too. So edit, paste in place. If you remember, I pulled the, the, those other two pieces onto my clipboard by cutting them. And then I just you know, throw them back in after I was done using my artisan tools. So I've got like my uh, building footprint. Uh, I could probably get rid of that. And then we got this one and I might just make a copy of this like that. And then um, you know, maybe I'll, I'll use like my uh, rectangle tool and let's just make like a reflecting pool out in front and so to clean this up a bit and let me work on it with uh, the tools I want to use I'm just going to clean up some of these hidden lines so to see all of your hidden geometry that's under view and then uh, hidden geometry again that's a that's a keyboard shortcut I use all the time is alt h Okay, so now um, here we are. We've got like that kind of gravel going on down here and I'm just gonna put like a reflecting pool and I'll just use an offset of like eight. Uh, maybe I'll do like another offset of uh, 48 and I'm just kind of making this up on the fly here. So like that and uh, let's just draw a couple rectangles in here and see if we can add some more detail once we get into Lumion like that. And so these are gonna be just uh, concrete pads or maybe some planters. We'll figure it out once we take a look. Uh, but I do need some materials. All right, so I think we're at a good point because I need to start pushing and pulling this like reflecting pool around. So um, I'm gonna hit uh, B is my shortcut for materials. And I do have this tray hidden, I'll, I'll expand that. All right, so material wise, it's okay to use SketchUp's super generic materials. Personally, I never present a SketchUp model. I use SketchUp to design space, think and design in 3D, and texture, but I don't, I don't typically show a client a SketchUp model. I almost always put it into Lumion. Uh, the only time they really see a SketchUp model is when it's on like a hidden line style and I'm creating construction documents. That's when they see that. But uh, me personally, I think that, that SketchUp is just a, a very powerful design uh, and modeling tool and then I like to present using Lumion. All right, so I'm gonna go with uh, some of these generic textures. I'm gonna use uh, landscaping, so we can just kind of go in here. Uh, I'm gonna hide, uh, turn off our hidden geometry, uh, pick a grass material, and then click on there. So now we've got our, our grass material assigned. I can go into like our asphalt and concrete, and maybe I'll just pick a concrete and so uh, I think I'll go with these. Uh, I'll, I'm just gonna hit all of these with it and clean up that edge. And then I'm going to push this down by say, oh, we'll say 18 inches. And then I'm going to make a copy of this. So I'll use my uh, move tool, tap control, tap the up arrow key, and I can move this straight up by let's say, um, I'll, I'll do eight, 18, and then I'm gonna hit uh, right click and make a group. All right, so this is going to be my water. So I'm gonna go into, um, oh, let's see, where do we have water? And I'll use one that's transparent like that. All right, and then uh, I'm gonna pull this up by say like one inch. And then I think I'll do the same to these guys, just so that there's like barely uh, a little bit above there. Another shortcut in SketchUp is with the push-pull tool. If you double click on a surface, it'll repeat the last push-pull. 
Uh, that works with the offset tool as well. So you can just click, 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 and just knock this stuff out. All right, so we're in good shape. Uh, we've got our kind of a, a reflecting pool. Uh, we need a little bit more uh, texturing here. So I'm gonna add our uh, grass, and then maybe I'll also go over here into my materials and go on to landscaping and choose like a, a gravel. So just putting like a gravel material under there. Now, um, now we gotta get to some of these other pieces here. So I'm gonna use a brick for this building. Um, I kinda goofed the form here, but I'm not gonna get too hung up on that just yet. Uh, we'll go with um, a stone, and I, I don't love the, the color of this stone, but we can adjust that. So let me go to our uh, brick and cladding, and we've got like this, I'll just kind of paint a bunch of these. And so it's not a very nice color, but if I hold Alt and sample it, now it's, you know, it's my live material, I can click on Edit, and then I can desaturate it and choose Colorize, maybe just a little bit of saturation, and then move this over into, um, you know, into a, a warmer stone, something like that, maybe lighten it up. So that looks a little bit better, but we can always swap that out in Lumion. All right, so I'm just gonna get my texturing done here, and then I'm gonna show you some really cool plugins. All right, so that looks pretty good. All right, and then this is gonna be a concrete. I'm just gonna sample, if I hold Alt, I can sample any material in my model. So once I start assigning materials to, to surfaces, it doesn't make sense for me to be in the material browser picking around in my libraries. I wanna use my uh, use my actual live scene, my model, as my palette. To do that, I just hold Alt and I can sample the water. You can see that becomes the active material. I can sample the concrete. And if I have everything selected, I can paint it all at once. And again, that Control H, it isolates that one piece for you, makes it really easy to just work on what you need. All right, so then this guy, I'm gonna do the same concrete there. Um, and then we're going to, um, I'm gonna make a copy of this line back by say uh, 15 feet. And I'm gonna double click on this and make it a group and double click on this and make it a group. All right, so now uh, plugins. There's a plugin called Windowizer. It's been around forever. You right click and you choose Windowize. And you say, I want X amount of rows, X amount of columns. I'm gonna do five rows and 12 columns and hit OK. And there's my curtain wall. So, and then I'll go in here, right click, Windowizer, and we're gonna do five rows, and maybe this time I'll just do five columns, like that. And then we'll go in here and sample our material and make sure that's our stone. All right, so that's how you can make some, some curtain walls extremely fast. And, you know, it's, it's pretty easy too to like get in here and then adjust this curtain wall, like if you want them to be at like different spacing, you know, you can do that. You have the option to, to move this stuff around. It's just dumbed down, simple SketchUp geometry. And you have full control over it. There's no questions about, well, this window type, you're breaking the rules, you know? You can just make what you want, and then we can render it in Lumion. So this is how you really communicate design. All right. So the other thing I think that makes renderings really pop are railings. That's like super important and they're very, very difficult to, to model. So check this out. There's a plugin called Instant Railing. I just need to draw a path and I'm just gonna like trace down this, this ramp like that and uh, get to the end here. All right, and then I'm gonna use my select tool and if I triple click it, uh, you guys should be able to see that there's like a blue highlight there, and I'm gonna make that into a group. All right, so the way that Instant, uh, it's, I think it's Instant Fence, but it has railing options. The way that Instant Fence works is I have to have a, a very simple path contained within a group. All right, so now I can go to, um, here's my Instant Fence dialog, and you can choose, you know, are you doing fences, uh, railings, uh, wood, metal, glass. Uh, if you have like a, a site where it's, you know, super hilly, you can just like select a line and it will build the fence. Uh, he has a retaining wall plug-in too. 
really powerful tools just to kind of get it right. Uh, it's so much easier than trying to figure out how it would actually be built. Just follow his rules, push the button, and you're like, yeah, that, that's the way it should be. All right, so I'm gonna go with railing glass and then click on my options here. And you can see you get all these different thumbnails. And I'm gonna go with something like this, this style. Um, that looks good to me. And then you can even look at your parameters and you can go nuts on this stuff. I, I got into this for a project one time where the railing was very specific. And you can, you can change all the parameters and, and if you wanna take the time to figure it out, go for it. But I gotta be honest, when we're moving quick and we're just trying to communicate a concept rendering, it's just pick the, pick the metal railing, pick the glass railing. It looks really good, it blends in, and it gives the client the idea of what they're going for. All right, so I'm gonna hide those parameters and then click make fence. And then it's asking me to tell me which, which side is the offset. So I'm just gonna move my cursor to the right and click, and there's my railing. Okay, so I'm gonna save this and yeah, we're good to go there. So I just need to add a little bit more uh, texturing here. So we'll do that. And then I'm going to sample this other material. We'll use that exact same metal for all of these guys and all of these guys. And these should be components. So those all get uh, materials too. Looking good. All right, and I think we need some uh, circular uh, columns kind of running underneath this ramp. So I'll use my circle tool. And before I start, I can tap the up arrow key and that locks me to drawing a circle uh, on the blue axis. All right, so now no matter where I go, it doesn't kind of uh, jump around on me. And then if I go and snap here, I'll just draw my first one on that midpoint. That way when I copy them, they're already centered on that ramp. So I'll let go of the mouse. Uh, this is the way I always work in SketchUp is I click once to start move my cursor to suggest a direction, let go of the mouse, and type six, enter. So now that is a perfect uh, six inch radius. I can pull it straight down, snap it to the ground, and then triple click, and I'll make this into a component and just say create. All right, next, uh, let's see, I'm just gonna scoot this in, and I'm just gonna eyeball these. Um, you know, it's, it's not critical for what we're doing. I'm just painting a pretty picture today. So we'll just kind of go like that. Uh, I'm gonna make a copy of this all the way down the line and like that. And you can see, um, let me do that again while I'm kind of zoomed out. So if I copy all the way down the line, check out my measurements dialog box. It's telling me that I'm at like roughly 80 feet, all right? So I'll just click to end my command and then I can let go of the mouse and I'm gonna type in 80 feet, enter. That locked it in to a perfect dimension. You can be very precise in SketchUp. The next thing I'm gonna do is type in five divided by enter. And you know what, if I don't like that, I could say like 12 divided by enter. And that's too much, maybe six divided by enter. As long as I don't invoke another command, I can continue to make those design decisions. Uh, this works for like shrubs, for windows, for any repeating element. You just type it in, make some adjustments. You don't have to hit control Z and back up and restart the command. Just re-input. And that measurements dialog box, it's always waiting for your input. All right, so that looks, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna lose the last one though. I, I think that's fine. And then um, let's see, we've got our uh, ramp here. I'm gonna use my solid tools. Uh, these, are so, these are tools I don't use all that much, but like this should be a solid. Let me check my, uh, my ramp. Uh, it's, it's not a solid right now. I'll see if I can fix that real quick. Uh, we've got like a stray edge somewhere. So, let's see, that's okay. And group and explode. All right, that's okay. I'm just gonna intersect these. Uh, I'm gonna select all of these guys. And I'm gonna put them in a group and that way I can um, that way I can always get back to them real quick. And then I'm gonna take all of these surfaces from below and copy them. So control C. And then I'm gonna jump into my group of columns and do a paste in place. And um, you know, at this point, these columns really aren't, um, I, I don't necessarily need them to be components because the, the truth is they're all different. So they should all be unique components. 
So you know what, just for right now, I'm just gonna explode them all. So I'll explode them and then I'll, uh, I'll hit Control A and then intersect faces with selection. And now I can easily just chop these columns off like this, like that, and kind of clean this up. So with SketchUp, there's always this uh, additive and subtractive modeling. I don't need that stuff anymore. Don't need this. So we'll get rid of all those pieces. And now I've got all of those kind of anchoring to the ground. And then we should probably use that same concrete on these. All right. So if we're going to make something happen in an hour, we got to get this thing into Lumion, right? So I don't know if you've used other, uh, other rendering programs, but like it is unheard of to be able to get something out the door within like 30 minutes. I mean, render time alone is typically overnight. With Lumion, it's literally seconds, so we're not panicked just yet. So I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna split my screen and set up Lumion on the other half for just a moment here so you can really see what's going on. All right, so here's our SketchUp model, all ready to rock and roll, and this is Lumion. So Lumion 10, just came out on Monday, psyched to have all, this, uh, all the new features and the new tutorials done. We're gonna start with a plain scene. All right, so we fire up a plain scene and there's a plugin for SketchUp called LiveSync. And LiveSync is uh, created for uh, ARCHICAD, Revit, Rhino, SketchUp, Vectorworks. Uh, there's a handful of them that have this LiveSync capability. And what it does, it just makes the connection between your modeling program and Lumion extremely easy. Okay, so the LiveSync plugins in, in SketchUp it's, it's this plug-in bar here, this toolbar. All I have to do to get my SketchUp model over into Lumion is click play. This is gonna bundle up that SketchUp model, throw it over into Lumion, and now it creates a live sync connection like that. All right, then uh, for this, I'm just gonna select everything and I'm gonna move it straight up. And uh, we're gonna call that like 25 feet above uh, the origin just cause uh, it comes in at zero, zero, zero in Lumion, and I like to leave it there. Now, check this out. My camera is all in line, and glass, grass, and water. If you have the name, um, sorry, if glass and water, if you have that, the words in the material name, Lumion will pick that up for you. And so it'll set up all of your glass and all of your water. Uh, so anyway, glass, grass, and water, those are like the three basic materials that you have to swap out in Lumion. And you have to because they look so good. So you get uh, animated water and there's a ton of different options on your water. Uh, glass has uh, pure glass technology. It does like frostiness and relief. Uh, and then grass is all 3D now. So those are like the three materials that you definitely want to swap out. Uh, so let's do that. I'm gonna um, max out my Lumion screen for just a moment and um, you know, sorry, let's get some uh, better lighting on our project. Uh, let's just slide this around and get like the sun actually doing something interesting on our building. Uh, and check this out, real skies in build mode. This is brand new. So in Lumion 10, we now have real skies in build mode. So you can pick the time of day and there's even these new real skies at night. These are absolutely phenomenal for like a night render. It's crazy when you just throw a few lights in your project and turn the real skies at night on. And the other thing these real skies do is they have like lighting baked into them. So it really like, it just casts light on your project and it only takes a few lights to make it look good. So for what we're up to though, I'm gonna go with a clear day. I'm sorry, I'm gonna go with a cloudy day. And this is like my favorite sky here. It's kind of a standard issue. And then we'll just kind of get our slider doing something a little different here. All right, so we're in good shape. So check this out. We're gonna work on our grass. Now I'm gonna go to my materials. I'll click on my grass, and then I'm go, gonna go to various 3D grass, and look at the options I have with my 3D grass. I just click once, and the whole thing changes over to all this like 3D grass mow pattern. All right, and then we've got like uh, different patterns. You can do like, um, just single lines. Uh, you can double click on any of these patterns and you can like mess with your grass length. Uh, you can bring it up, then you can kind of cut it down a little bit. Um, you know, the grass size, 
It's just everything is completely configurable with these sliders and you get this real time feedback. So, you know, the whole point is that you're like crafting this living environment and you're getting the feedback in real time. And when we hit render though, it's gonna get even better. So it looks really cool now, but when we uh, hit render, it gets polished. All right, and then, uh, you know, again on, on your water, although I am pretty satisfied with the water they chose for me, I'm gonna go with, uh, here's our water. We have like uh, pool water, we have flat water, um, nice pool, like, you know, you can adjust the waves and the caustics. You can make it do all kinds of different things. Uh, we can change the color of it. So I usually just stick with the presets though. So let's see, I'm just gonna go with like Azure pool and that's pretty subtle. Ah, we'll go with Calm Tropical, I like that. All right, so let's see, we need a couple other materials going on. So another, um, another option is to, you know, I showed you how you can swap out the materials for the, the realistic, animated, optimized Lumion materials. Well, the other thing you can do is you can texture up your SketchUp model, and then you can use the textures that came in and assign Lumion properties to those. So for instance, this, this stone, it looks pretty flat right now. But if I click on it, I can go to standard. I can make this into a standard material. And in there, I can go with, um, like expand some of my settings. So I definitely don't want any gloss. Uh, I don't know if that's showing up too well, but um, we're gonna turn off our gloss and reflectivity. Our stone shouldn't have that. Uh, we can click on this button here to create a normal map from the color map. When I click that, I can now add relief. So you can see how those shadows kind of get darker. And so that just adds a bit of, of punch to your, to your rendering. All right, and then also on my weathering settings, I can dial up the weathering. And you can see if I hold shift, I can kind of make a more precise movement. And you can just get like different types of like weathering on your, your stone. What that does is it breaks up that computer generated feel. And also, you know, try different ones. Like, you know, the weathering on plastic is more of like this white streaking. Uh, I think that that just adds, a, you know, just takes the edge off of that computer material, but mess with it, see what you come up with. Also, you can add foliage. So if I want like ivy crawling up this entire building, uh, let's see, I'm gonna do uh, our ground level and our spread here, and then bring our ground level back down. So here we go. And then you can change the uh, leaf type. There's all kinds of different types. Uh, we can have a wider spread, bring the size down. Uh, so that material will have, you know, this foliage crawling up for the whole thing. All right, so uh, we, we probably don't need, uh, maybe I'll just leave that like, uh, I'll move the ground level down a bit just so it's like kind of creeping on the bottom there. So that's kind of cool, add something to it. Um, I'll say okay. All right, so we're in good shape. We've got uh, the building form uh, set up. We've got some texturing going on, but what we're really lacking is our objects and the nature objects is what really kills it in Lumion. So with a lot of rendering programs, you just simply get a rendering engine. And that's going to take your geometry and your textures and it's going to uh, make a beautiful image. But then it's up to you to like Photoshop it or go find the other objects and the trees and the people and the cars and all this stuff. Well, with Lumion, you get all of that stuff baked into the program. So the nature library is enormous. I think there's, I forget, there's uh, at least like a thousand trees and plants and all that. And each one of these has several sub tabs. So it's just infinite, the amount of options you have to just dump trees and plants and flowers into your model. Um, I'm gonna go with, uh, oh, I'm sorry, then we also have um, fine detail nature, that's new in Lumion 10. Uh, people and animals, uh, cars, we've got SUVs, sports cars, um, everything that you need to just populate your scene. Uh, there's nothing worse than when you're in the middle of a project and you're like, ah, I need this, this, these cars, and then you're on these other object websites searching for cars, and then you're searching for people, and then you're searching for trees. To have it right here where you just start clicking and dropping this stuff, it's all optimized, it's all animated, it's perfect. All right, so let's start with our trees. So I'll go back to my nature library, and I'm gonna go with broadleaf trees, and I can even type into the search panel, 
uh, something like, uh, I'll do oak. And let's see, I'm gonna kind of zoom up a little bit. Uh, we'll, we'll just pick this first oak tree and I'll click to place it. And let's take a look. So you can see that this tree is blowing in the breeze. It responds to weather. It's already animated. So if I dial up the foliage wind, it'll just, it'll uh, kind of shake harder. Uh, you can turn it into fall colors. It's just, everything is all set up, ready to go. And look at all these different options. So you can just kind of click around here and say like, I want another tree. I want another one of these guys, these guys. And so, and these are just oak trees. You know, we have five tabs of that. So check this out now. We also have a new feature called uh, paint placement. And this came in with Lumion 10 and it's this button right here. So when I click paint placement, I can zoom back out a little bit and I can adjust my density and then I can click and drag and I can just paint these trees on there. I can use erase and kind of thin them out just a touch. And then we'll just go with the next one. We'll go like this. All right. And we'll thin those out too. And then let me zoom in just a bit. So check this out. So the ability to add all these different objects uh, we even have like, um, let's see, I'm going to clear my search and go back to our plants. And so you can, like this American boxwood is a decent, uh, like kind of general, uh, general shrub like that. You can go into like uh, forest wood here and like just take like these logs and scatter them. We've got uh, rocks, you can scatter those around. So you can just kind of like make your whole forest so quickly. Sweet. All right, so now we're, we're in good shape, um, but I want to I want to talk a little bit about this new feature. Um, the new feature being uh, fine detail nature. So these fine detail nature objects are are like these Lumion plants, which I, I got to be honest, I was already completely satisfied with the Lumion plant library as it is, and then they made like I forget like fifty or sixty fine detail nature objects. Now these are like absolute realistic. So these are really good to put in the foreground of your scene. So I'm gonna go back, uh, I'll say okay, go to my fine detail nature library. And here I've got like uh, this tree here. I'll just kind of put this maybe, I don't know if that's a good place for it, but let's go look at that one. So you can see this one has like, I mean, the, it's kind of hard to see on the projector probably, but the bark and uh, the leaves are all extremely detailed and all the leaves kind of have like their own axis of, of animation. They're a little heavier, so they, they will slow you down on render time and all that. But I gotta be honest, Lumion's so fast anyway, it's like we're talking about like an extra 30 seconds here, no big deal. So uh, find detail nature, I can go back to my place objects. Uh, I think we have some other plants here too. Um, some more like shrub type, yeah, that'll work. So we'll just do one of those like, I don't know, over here over here, it's like a lemon tree. All right, so I, I think we're in good shape. Uh, again, you know, this is a, uh, a work in progress. You know, you, you get the broad strokes in, and then we're gonna go back and we can refine the design. So I'll show you how it's, it's possible to make these revisions. So let's hop into the photo studio. Now the photo studio is where you're going to take snapshots of your model, and so you lock in those camera views, and you have the option for 10 camera views in a photo set, and you're given the, uh, 10 photo sets. So we're gonna just take a snapshot of this. Uh, we'll say like that looks pretty good right there. Uh, I will tell you that I usually set my focal length to 35 when it comes to anything exterior. So I can double click on that focal length and type 35. And so that just kind of helps those uh, exterior shots kind of flatten out a bit. All right, so we'll uh, store our camera there. And then I'm gonna kind of orbit around and maybe pick another view like, you know, something like this would be cool. And we'll come up above the grass like that. And so I can snapshot that one. And then, you know, maybe some close-ups. So like, you know, several uh, close-up shots are really nice too. So we'll do that. You can see I missed a texture on that back wall. No big deal, we'll get that. All right, 
So the ultimate easy button in Lumion, if it's like absolute crunch time and you got to get something out the door, you click the custom style button and then you click realistic. And the only thing you got to adjust is the real skies and change your heading and just get some like good shadows happening on that building like that. And uh, I am going to just adjust my view one notch to get that tree kind of kind of happening in my view. So that's kind of cool. All right. So we'll snapshot that. All right, so I'm uh, maybe the heading just get those shadows going somewhere else. That's fine. Okay, so uh, render render times. If I just hit render here and do 1920 by 1080, and I'm going to save this to like my desktop temp, and I'll call this image one and hit go. It's it's truly unheard of to be able to to set this thing up and hit render and get something out within like. I don't know, it, it's chugging along here. I'm doing some screen capturing, but we're gonna get this in like maybe 15, 20 seconds. So uh, you can see like the real sky effect kicking in, like the, the kind of, the sky pushes like a blue light. And uh, so it's kind of getting that overpass. So this is where, you know, the final output is gonna look like just infinitely better than what you get in build mode. So let's just take a look at that. And there we go. So that's you know one final rendering knocked out, but um, you know maybe we want some changes. We still have like nine minutes left, right? So let's go back and take a look at uh, you know first we got to set up our other views and let's go make some tweaks and then we'll we'll render one more time. All right, so I'm going to close this, uh, hop back in here. All right, so to make sure that all my views are kind of where I want them to be, I I'm I'm going to set up a view with um, my own effect stack, all right? So I showed you the easy button being these custom styles. Well, I have my own way of blending the styles. Like when I look at this effect stack over here, you can see it's like real skies, sharpen exposure, and I've got my own way of doing that. So I'm gonna hop over onto this image and I'm gonna add an effect. Now, the effects are all of the different uh, ingredients that you're gonna blend in on your image. All right, so the first effect I always add is going to be the real skies effect. All right, so real skies is critical because we need the sun casting light on our, on our design. And I always go with usually cloudy and just pick something that has an interesting sky and adjust the heading until you're getting some, some interesting shadows. All right, and then check this out. If I like click in the preview window, this is a new feature in Lumion 10. We get this like quick preview. So it does a, like if I just kind of move my camera and then I click, it's gonna update a rendered real-time preview. So that's super handy. Like previously in like version nine, you'd have to render a, a test shot. And, and yeah, you could like get some good feedback, but um, you always had to render a test shot to, to really see it. Now it's happening like very quickly in the browser here, in the preview window. All right, so I've got my real sky in. Uh, I'm gonna add another effect. Uh, we'll go with, uh, weather, let's see, we'll go with, um, let's see, sun, weather, objects, um, let's see, uh, we'll go with uh, two-point perspective. So two-point perspective just kind of shores up the vertical lines. That gets, them, uh, gets all of the verticals in your, in your uh, image aligned with the frame of the camera. I'll add another effect. Um, well, I like lens flare. Personally, I, I usually dial up the master brightness. And so when you dial that up, it kind of gets this like bloom blown out effect. Uh, so you gotta, you know, just go with a little bit, but I think that gives it like a brighter feel. Uh, I can tell you that if I was gonna make an error on brightness, it would be to make it brighter rather than darker. So a, a brighter image sells better. Uh, I'll add another effect and this one will be, oh, we don't need to mess with exposure. Uh, outlines, I think this is a really cool look when you add outlines. And then I turn the transparency all the way up to kind of get rid of that like uh, haze they put over it. And then I just make it a little bit more subtle. And this just gives you like that kind of slightly hand sketched over effect. So I, I try to make these like uh, more conceptual, looser images rather than like uh, extreme photo reel. All right, so let's add another one like color correction. Uh, the temperature is a good one. If you, if you warm it up, it often gets cooled down by the real skies effect. So just a, a notch up is a good idea. Uh, 
let's see, I'm gonna go to um, image overlay, artistic. I think uh, these are, they changed the order in Lumia 10, so I gotta kinda sort around for some of my stuff. So skylight, definitely an important one. Uh, that'll, that's what takes the, um, the, the blue light from the sky and makes it bounce around. And let's add some more uh, hyperlight. I usually just turn that all the way up. And uh, global illumination, we're not gonna mess with. And these soft shadows are super cool. Let me find a good example of that. All right, so like right here, see how those shadows are like video game shadows. Well, if I turn on soft shadows, they, they just go to this like, you know, just a soft shadow, more realistic. Turn on fine detail shadows, that picks up a shadow in every blade of grass. Super cool. All right, so that's, that's how I like to, you know, set up my effects. And, you know, maybe I would just scoot up just a notch, snapshot my view. Now, once you've got your blend of effects that works, you can save it. So I can go to the menu and do file and choose save effects. And I always call this uh, style photo real dream. So photo real dream, enter. All right, it's kind of photo real, but there's like that haziness and sketchiness to it. So now I can either email that to you guys and you can plug it onto your, your renderings, or I can go over here and go to file and choose load effects and just load up that photo real dream on this project or the next project. Super uh, seamless workflow to kind of make this happen. All right, um, I also want to show you guys, uh, I do have a new product out. It's called Crowdsource 2D. And so if you go to crowdsource2d.com, we have a starter pack. And so what we've done is we've taken a ton of photographs of all these people that have come into our office uh, you sign up for that starter pack, we have like 50 people. Uh, it's really uh, super valuable. I mean, if you're looking for like modern day cutout people uh, that are not stolen from a uh, European plaza, you know, or uh, you have the legal right to use it, um, the faces aren't blurred, they're high resolution, a diverse crowd of characters, this is where it's at. That's the, the problem we had is, is the one we solved, and that's uh, Crowdsource 2D. So give that a shot, you know, get our starter pack, and I'll show you, you know, you can just go over here in Lumion, uh, I can then import some people. So I'll say uh, place a new, a new file and I'm gonna go to my desktop and I have my starter pack here. So let's go with like uh, all of our standing people and uh, I'll just view our extra large icons. So this is the starter pack. These are all the different people that you get. And so um, let's see, I'll go with, we'll put, we'll put read in there, choose open and say okay. And then I'll, I'll just drop read over here on the uh, overlook there. And then I'll, I'm gonna import one more. And let's see, let's go with on. So open, okay. And then all I need to do is use my materials and make these guys into billboard materials. And now they always face the camera like that. So the difference with our people is that we have we, we take multiple shots of the same person doing different activities in different poses. And what this means is that if you have like five different images, you don't have that same person doing the same damn thing in every single image. You get the, the same people experiencing space, walking through, hanging out, toasting each other, carrying a suitcase, umbrella. Uh, there's all kinds of options to breathe that life into your image. And I, I think that these, this collection of people, we're really psyched to get this out the door. We're actually launching it on, uh, I think on Wednesday but uh, the starter pack's available now. All right, so um, I know I'm, I'm close on time and I'll, I'll finish up here just a moment. I wanna show you this, this other idea of the fact that like, you know, you can continue to make changes to this. So like if I come over here uh, and realize I missed a texture, I can then sample this and you know, update my model in real time. Uh, it's super easy, like maybe I wanna draw, um, I'll, I'll make another one of these like kind of punched opening scenarios like this. I'll, and then I'll make a copy of this. Uh, so I'll take that surface, uh, tap the up arrow key to constrain, uh, make a copy of that by 90 degrees. And then I'm gonna push both of these back by say uh, six inches like that. And then I'm gonna make each one into a group. And then I'm gonna do my windowizer trick like that. And uh, the columns, let's just do three columns on each of these, like that. 
and then window eyes, and we'll just run the same settings. And check it out. I mean, the glass, the materials, everything is happening in absolute real time. And when it's go time, and it's time to render, and the presentation's over, and you gotta get something out the door, you just hit render your whole photo set. And we're gonna hit this whole thing at the same time and do 1920 by 1080. And then I'll go to desktop temp, and we'll just overwrite image one and say okay. So all three of those images are now gonna cook at the same time. This first one was based on just that easy button, the, the realistic styles in Lumion. So there's all these different styles of daytime, uh, nighttime and all that. Uh, then the, the next two are gonna be based on my own blend. So you have the option to make your own blend of effects, uh, just make it your own, save it, and use it on the next project. Cool, so um, we'll let that cook for a moment. Um, but yeah, my name's Mike Brightman, company is Brightman Designs. Uh, my book is The SketchUp Workflow for Architecture. Uh, definitely hope you guys can make, uh, some of you guys can make it to our workshop this afternoon. And uh, check out uh, lumion.com, that's where you get the EDU uh, version of Lumion. SketchUp.com, of course, you know, they've got some options for students as well. And then uh, also our conducttools.com. And you guys actually, I think, all have access to Conduct now. Uh, so anyways, I really appreciate you guys coming out. I, I sincerely appreciate you guys coming to my lecture. So thank you very much. So. Cool. Cool.